There are times in this job where I have to pinch myself. I am honoured to have partnered up with Loire Valley Wines. The Loire Valley is France, it's like the mid-stretch of the Loire Valley River and it is full of phenomenal wine producers and I even had the honour of going to spend three days in the Loire Valley doing a little bit of a wine tour and I learned so much, I'm not gonna lie, I nerded out hard. There is so much to know and love about wine. And even though I always knew I loved the taste of it, when you really kind of dig down deep into how it all works, it is fascinating and you will end up savouring every single drop. So today I'm going to give you a crash course in the very, very basics of food and wine pairing because I've reached that age. I now don't just order the cheapest off the menu, I actually look and go, oh, let's see, a little Sauvignon Blanc there, is it? From the Loire, don't mind if I do, probably a bit acidic, probably some fresh kind of limey citrus notes there. I learned a few things. If you had a kind of similar understanding to me all of about a week ago, then I was always under the belief that red food, red wine, white meat, white wine but there's so much more exciting things you can do with wine. So where do we begin? Because in the world of flavour and food, there's like 20 characteristics to food, from the simple of sweet, salty, sour, to the more extreme of umami and electric. Now with wine, you've got six flavour characteristics. Sweet, salty, bitter, acid, spice and fat. There's lots of flavour profiles to play with in wine that balance out very naturally in our world of food. There's kind of three basic ways you can approach this. You can complement the flavours, you can amplify the flavours, or if you're feeling really brave, you can contradict the flavours. If you want to complement the flavours in your dish, then you might want to try and balance them out a little bit. If you've got a very fatty dish, such as a mac and cheese, then you might want to get a nice acidic wine that's going to balance and complement those flavours out. Or you might want to amplify, say you've got a gorgeous citrusy Sauvignon Blanc, then actually having like a lovely citrus dessert or a citrusy salad, that's going to work beautifully too. If you want to just pull out all the stops and you've got yourself a chocolate praline dessert, you're not going to go with warm red, you're going to tossle that aside and just go, hey, I want a really clean, crisp, light flavoured white. I mean, it could work. So we're going to have ourselves a little aperitif. So you've got an aperitif which is to stimulate your appetite and then you've got a digestif which is to aid digestion. So you have an aperitif before you eat and you have a digestif after you eat. So nothing but class here. So this one is the Langlois Brut. It's a Cremant, or a Cremant de Loire especially, is an amazing, more affordable, and frankly, more delicious alternative to champagne. Oh, I said it. Yeah, I said it and I meant it. Cremant, if it says method traditional, method traditionnel on the back, that means it has been made in the same way as champagne. I'm not gonna fire it. Plus all those little bubbles getting excited, being like, free me! Can I just actually, disclaimer, I'm not a sommelier. Shock, no surprise there. People who do properly do wine deserve so much admiration because quite frankly, the knowledge is vast. So, when tasting wine, smell it. Always smell it because in the same way that with food, we actually taste through scent. I'm getting a bit of an orange but also a bit like a nectar in, actually. Unripe, it's kind of that unripe scent. So when you taste wine, to check the acidity, you take a sip, lean your head over, and the amount of saliva that comes, that fills your mouth, indicates how acidic it is. Try it, try it. Oh, not crazy acidic at all. There is an acidity there. I'd say it was a medium acidity. Didn't get a too, too like Niagara Falls about it, so. It's got that luxurious feel and it's fresh and it's citrusy and it's delicate and it's lovely and it's, oh, it makes you feel really classy. What a fabulous aperitif. 
So next up we've got this little number. This is a muscadet. Muscadet is made in the western part of the Loire Valley. So on brand. So muscadet normally has quite a high acidity, very citrusy notes. And the lovely freshness of muscadet lends itself really, really well to salty seafood. So we're talking shellfish. And in Moules Frites, which is what I've prepared for you today. And if you want this recipe, then make sure you just click in the description box where I've linked a whole blog post that's got all of this information for you. Enjoy. Best served, super chilled. That's not just for show, that's to oxidise it and to like just bring out all those flavours. Oh, that's so lovely. Next up is a Sauvignon Blanc. This particular one is from Lionel Gosson. I'm not French, I've probably butchered that. But this is a Sauvignon Blanc from the Touraine region. Touraine, Touraine. Touraine runs all the way from Anjou in the west to Salon in the east. It is a big region and they grow all of the grape varieties, red, white, rosé. Sauvignon Blanc is actually the name of, of the grape. This might sound really silly for anyone who is a bit of a wine connoisseur out there and knows. I wasn't aware that Sauvignon Blanc was the name of the actual grape. I just assumed it was like a a style of wine rather than the name of the grape behind it but yes this is a Sauvignon Blanc grape. Sauvignon Blancs are naturally quite herbaceous which is lovely for anything kind of salady but try a Sauvignon with your cheese platter. Instinctively we serve like red wines and ports with cheeses they can kind of take on the powerful tastes of like a really mature cheddar or a nice smelly Stilton but I find that a lovely white like a Sauvignon on is fantastic at clearing the palate and just kind of freshening everything up in the richness of all those cheeses so I highly recommend I feel like that was very articulate I don't know where that came from then we however are still on our main course right now and so I've got a delicious goat's cheese tart here that saltiness is going to balance beautifully those lovely vibrant seasonal almost slightly bitter green herbaceous notes perfect that, that is where wine and food is really clever, okay? Separately, that goat's cheese is very much salty. There's a creaminess in there. This is quite acidic. Yes, you get the fruitiness, but when it comes together, that harmony, all of a sudden, that tastes almost like a goat's cheese and caramelized onion tart, just from playing with those fruity notes in the wine. And equally, all of a sudden, that acidity is dampened down by the goat's cheese, and there's a creaminess that comes through in the wine. Oh, I love this discovery. Wine and food, I get it, I get it now. Oh. You can never go too wrong with a rosé and a dessert. A rosé is not made by mixing white and red grapes. A white wine, you use white grapes. A red wine, you use red grapes. A rosé, you use red grapes. This is like traditionally. The difference between the colours in a rosé and a red are to do with the skins. So with a rosé of this colour, where it's a slightly deeper blush, they'll basically squish down the juice out of the grapes let the skins be there for a little bit and then remove the skins off before they start the kind of fermentation process and everything. With a the red, they leave the skins throughout that process so the colour really deepens and darkens. And then sometimes when you get those really, really light rosés, those are made by just literally skimming the skins off almost instantly, not even letting them fall into the juice of the grapes. Here we have a rose d'anjou, classic fragrance and well balanced. Quite summer notes to it. There is a lovely viscous texture to this rosé, which is going to play perfectly with our poached pear. Poached in the flavours of cardamom, of star anise, of cinnamon. That syrup has thickened and it's gone glossy and it's got its own kind of syrupy coating as well, playing around with the textures of both the food and wine. They're not delicate spices. Cinnamon has a heat to it, it has a punch, it has a pepperiness. Because this has a very almost like unripened fruit flavour to it, all of a sudden it's brought back, that pear is lured back into the flavours of that dish. Oh, it's clever, it's like science. Food and wine science. 
So there you have it, like a little crash course in food and wine pairing. I have loved this partnership with Loire Valley Wine. So thank you so much to them and every producer who is there making amazing, amazing wines in the Loire Valley region. The Loire Valley, I kid you not, is a well and truly bucket list destination, whether it is for wine or food or for just the experience. I could not urge you enough in your life to go and do a Loire Vine Valley. Vine Valley? <laughs> <laughs> the things you can do and see and drink on such a reasonable budget. And the Loire Valley is frankly beautiful and doing some really amazing and exciting things with wine. If you want to see more about the recipes today, the wines of today, or anything Loire Valley, then make sure you click all those links in the description box. There is a lot of information there that I urge you to have a gander at. And thank you so, so, so much as always for watching. Cheers! Cheers.